What's up, guys? Jade's Corner back here again for another episode of my Fantasy Fight Slash Who Would Win series. And in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys a highly requested matchup that has been requested for quite a few months now and possibly one of the best matchups I have for you guys today. Alpha Derek Hale versus Damon Salvatore. Who is coming out on top in this matchup? Let's find out. So, I already talked about Derek Hale plenty of times on Fantasy Fights, I'm pretty sure. I think I talked about him approximately like three or four times, so I'm not going to go over him too much in this video. Uh, Damon, I didn't talk about too much, but I talked about him a few videos ago when I made the Salvatore Brothers versus the McCall Pack, so you guys should still be relatively... Uh, fresh on what Damon can do in terms of his powers and abilities. So I'm just going to get into who I think would win this matchup. So basically, I'm going to be providing points on why I think the person who wins wins. And I'm going to try to make it as balanced as possible, going over one person's side, then the other person's side, like I usually do, and then call it a day. So uh, who do I think would win? In all honesty, I think it's Damon. And I'm going to go over Derek first and why I think that Derek would probably put up a pretty good fight, even though he's not as strong as Werewolf, such as Scott McCall. And mind you, we're talking about Alpha Derek. So no Derek Hell evolved, no Beta Derek, no Derek in season four when he had the yellow eyes and he was a teenager. We're only specifically talking about everything Derek accomplished as an Alpha in this video, which wasn't that much. And he was probably one of the weakest alphas we've ever seen in the entire show compared to all the other ones, including Scott. So, yeah, um, Derek, Derek's pretty impressive. Uh, he has really impressive superhuman strength, which allows him to go evenly on hand with the Canima, even though the Canima is clearly shown to be stronger than at least Derek's level of being an alpha werewolf. We don't know if the Canima is on par with any of the alpha pack, but it could be assumed that it is. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to say he's on par at least or not on par or above alpha Derek in terms of the strength level because he didn't really go up against any other alphas we know of in the show so Derek as an alpha was pretty impressive he, like I mentioned before he was able to go hand in hand with the Canima for a short while before it overpowered him he was also able to go uh, up against a few of the alpha pack members Ethan and Aiden merged were <laughs> Derek couldn't hang with them Neither could he hang. He couldn't hang with Deucalion either, but he was pretty evenly matched, I'd say, with Ennis, which is very impressive given that Ennis is an enhanced alpha. He already killed all the betas in his pack as an alpha, so he had all of their power added to him, and Derek didn't kill any betas of his own pack, at least yet. We'll get to that later. Uh, because by the end of season three, you can technically consider Derek to be an enhanced alpha because he technically was forced to kill Boyd and he does have Boyd spark within him, at least at the end before he gave up his alpha power. So you could make an argument for Derek being an enhanced alpha um, and we can use that in this fight, but I'll get to that in a few. So yeah, Derek went up against Ennis. He was pretty evenly matched with him throughout all their fights although i'd argue ns is a tad bit stronger than derek and then derek went against kali and kali completely outclassed derek in all their fights because of just the uh, abilities and certain uh unique uh what's the word unique um 
traits that Kali had, such as having claws on her feet, she was able to utilize that to her advantage in the fight against Derek. And Derek pretty much didn't know how, didn't know what the hell to do against her in both of their fights. He jobbed out the first time pretty bad getting a bar impaled through him and though you would think this would automatically kill him it goes to show how impressive the werewolf healing is in the teen wolf universe as uh, as uh compared to the vampire diaries universe whose werewolves their healing factor is okay but i definitely give the edge with healing factor to teen wolf for sure because teen wolf werewolves go through a lot of crazy shit and they heal from it pretty well so yeah um that's Derek's strength in a nutshell then i would say his superhuman speed is pretty average i would say it's on par with a vampire diaries werewolf in human form when they're not using the rings to uh use their werewolf powers in human form so it's 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 pretty okay uh it's just like every other werewolf when they're in their partially shifted form from teen wolf so yeah and then his superhuman agility slash reflexes are okay too um, I think that Derek uses this to his advantage the most besides Kali and Scott McCall because Scott McCall, when he likes to fight, he uses like gymnastic techniques and he's very creative with uh, how he uh, battles with the flow of his movement. So is Derek. And I go to argue that Derek is the second best hand to hand combatant and technical fighter in terms of actually having pure fighting skill aside from Kali and Teen Wolf because they both seem to use a few techniques that other werewolves just don't use because they, they're they just really strong and they use brute strength. So uh, yeah, Derek's superhuman agility and reflexes are pretty good too. And I think that he has more agility and reflex than Damon. So that would also be a factor into Derek holding his own in this. And like I mentioned before, Derek's durability is pretty good too he fell a few I wouldn't say stories but he fell pretty far off of a sort of like platform and onto an escalator back first which almost killed him but he had enough strength to get up and walk out and you know go find Jennifer Blake NS on the other hand was near death so uh, yeah, and that could be attributed to Derek not really hitting the harder part of the escalator. He kind of hit like the little flat part and it's actually ended up on the stairs. So yeah, you would argue that the stairs, you know, with the material they're made out of, it wouldn't be as, or it would be worse than the platform Derek landed on. But that's, uh, uh, that, that's something you can argue in another video. So yeah, um, Derek's durability is pretty good not gonna lie and also he went through a lot of crazy shit such as when bear uh boy i almost said bear my fault uh boyd and cora were attacking him and scratching him and you would think that Derek would probably be weak as hell and die at that moment in time and he was to a degree but even though he let that happen um it's still crazy that he survived two fully bloodlusted werewolves on a full moon where werewolves powers are supposed to increase uh he basically took that shit and then you know waited for the full moon to go away and he was i think he was taking it for quite a while too so yeah very impressive is it anything as impressive as damon's durability no because vampire healing factor in the vampire diaries is pretty crazy as we all know <laughs> from watching the show but um yeah those are all the uh feats and yeah, Derek, in terms of the other powers, they don't really ca they don't really add anything too special to him in this fight. Since we're not using evolved Derek, he can't use the werewolf full transformation yet, so we're not going to add that to this fight. But now we're going to move on to Damon. Uh, already went over Damon in another video, like I mentioned before. But I think what gives Damon the edge in this battle is just his creative nature and determination. Uh, Damon, even though he's not one of the strongest vampires in the series, he's definitely one of the most dangerous for sure, especially when he's angry. And he's really known for you being creative in all of his fights, such as when he took down a, th a vampire who's 300 uh, years plus older than him and Julian who was around like 400 years old I think by the time we're introduced to him in season seven and even though you would think that Julian could easily take out a younger vampire like Damon uh, Damon with his creative nature and how he likes to be creative when fighting opponents that he knows he's weaker than uh, he finds a way to beat him always so yeah and Damon's actually pretty smart too I'd argue he's smarter than Derek 
Um, and he likes to attack people using surprise attacks a lot, such as when he attacked Elijah Michelson with his brother and when he surprised uh, uh, Cole with a super speed. And Damon, when at full strength, uh, can be fully dangerous, especially when fighting for the people he loves, such as Elena Gilbert or Stefan. And Damon, when he's tag teaming with people, he has more of an advantage too, such as when he was able to fight Catherine Pierce, who's like 400 years older than him. Even though she still beat the both of them, Dame is still impressive that Damon and Stefan were able to, you know, hold their own against Catherine, given that they're like 400 years younger than her. So, yeah. Um, Damon's also been shown to use mind compulsion, which he could definitely use against Damon in this fight. And Damon could pretty much just compel, uh, what's his name, Derek to rip his own heart out. So that's also a way Damon could win too. Now, I know I didn't mention that in the other fights such as Klaus and Stefan and this and that, but that's because I think that the opponents they're fighting against, um, well, both of those opponents that I put them up against, the Beast of Jevodan and Scott McCall are way stronger than Alpha Derek. So um, the compulsion, I think, wouldn't be a factor in that fight. But Alpha Derek's one of the weaker alphas, so I think that Damon would be able to handle him not to the point where it's a full on um not not to the point where it's a full on smoke like he takes him out pretty easily like i said he'd be pretty even but uh yeah definitely think that damon would most likely be able to get to derek and use his compulsion on him as opposed to the other videos i just mentioned but uh yeah there's many ways damon can win this damon could also use his super speed which he uses a lot in fights too and Team Wolf Werewolf seem to generally have good reaction speed, so I think Derek would have a pretty good reaction to uh, Damon's attacks. But Damon's strength, it's much more powerful than Stefan's, and Stefan, I said, could uh, easily beat Scott McCall in that video I did with Stefan versus Scott, which, which you should totally check out. Um, so, yeah, and that's due to the fact that Damon constantly feeds on human blood, so his power is always on an all-time high. And yeah, there's just way too many things uh, that I can mention um, that Damon could do to beat Derek even more. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much who I think would win. I think Damon would take this pretty much eight out of the ten times these two confront each other. And yeah, that's who I think would win. Sorry if I kept stuttering through this video. Um, I haven't been using a script for these lately because... I feel like a script is just a waste of time and I like talking naturally. It's more natural to me instead of just trying to read off of a screen while I'm looking down at my phone. So yeah, um, that's the reason why I was probably stuttering during this. So I apologize. But if you guys liked this video, make sure you guys leave a like. Also comment who you think would win. Alpha Damon or <laughs> I said Alpha Damon. Alpha Derek or Damon Salvatore. And make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so that you're notified when I post a new video every single week. This is Jade's Corner, going to get out of here. Make sure you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace, love, positivity as always. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Deuces.